um, attend could watch later. So that's your cue, Emily, to make sure it's recorded, but also want to make sure everybody knows that um, the session is being recorded as well. Okay. All right, Mark. So the little gem that I'm going to talk about today is the Canvas quiz tool and editing or using quiz questions that involve equations. Um, so you can have Canvas um, randomly generate numerical questions for you. So there are a couple things. If you're used to using the angel system, there are some differences, but there are a lot of similarities. And right here I have loaded uh, a sample quiz that we were working with Bill Brune for a meteorology course. Um, so this is just going to use this as my template. Um, I've got the quiz set up already and I'm going to edit the quiz to look at some questions that involve equations. Oh, hold on a minute, Mark. I'm not sure where she has the screen she shares. From that computer. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, which let's see. Um, if you go sure. to the bottom of the screen, a little menu should come up, right? Get this back. Oh, you were so busy. That's right. Oh, let's do that. Share screen. Yeah, there we go. Do you want to keep, yeah, keep, oh, no, 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 cancel, cancel. cancel. There we go, that's better. Okay, are we sure? Sorry. Okay, Sorry. so for those of you at a distance, I just jumped into a Canvas site that we have set up for the Food for Thought, and I jumped into one of the quizzes that we have set up as a template. Um, and I went in to edit the quiz, and I'm gonna look at some of the questions that are in there. Um, if you've been into Canvas, Canvas does quizzes, multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank sorts of questions. But I'm here to talk specifically about using equations inside of quiz questions. Um, if we get down towards the bottom. So, sample word problem. Sam's on a train heading from Pittsburgh, traveling at X miles per hour, the distances, Y miles, how long is Sam's trip gonna be to get between the two cities? Um, <clears throat> If we edit the question itself, we can see that the question type is a formula question, and here are all the other choices for what types of questions you can put in. Again, very similar to what Angel had, um, but what I'm gonna deal with are formula-based questions. And to write the formula, to get Canvas to understand that you're using uh, variables, you use square brackets, around whatever you want to call your variable. So I could have said this is alpha, oops, cat blocks, or anything. And as soon as I put a square bracket around anything, Canvas knows that I have a variable. And whatever I put inside the bracket is a variable name. So I'll just put this back to X. And you see it changed down here. So again, writing out your question, it can be something a word problem like this using brackets, or let me go down to another question, a simple question here, where I'm just asking x equals a divided by b. And again, it knows my variables are a and b now. And let me scroll up to the first question. Um, once Canvas realizes that I have variables in my equation, it gives me a space to set parameters for that variable, so I can say, make y anywhere from 100 to 200 or 100 to 1,000. I can set that up and I can tell it how many decimal places to put into the question. And then Canvas also gives you an example of a type of variable that it's gonna throw in there so you can just double check visually whether it makes sense to you or not. So again, x is Somewhere between one and 10, it's giving me an example of three. Y is between 100 and 1,000, it's giving me an example of 870. Then you have to come down and tell Canvas what actual formula you want to solve. So my question above said uh, A equals X divided by Y. So you type in X divided by Y. If you're used to using that angel system, Angel, you used to have to continue using your brackets 
in this part where you put in the final formula, Canvas doesn't want brackets. If you put a bracket in, put one in, and then say I want to save this equation, it tells you that there's an unrecognized character at zero. And this number here is the place, the digit, or the character where it's finding the problem. So it didn't like character zero, which is the bracket. So delete that one, go back again, x divided by y, save. Now it understands, it's fine. So it's saying, now it's asking me for how many decimal, place, decimal places do I want in my answer. Angel didn't have a limit, Canvas has a limit. I can only go four decimal places with my answers. Uh, so depending on your needs, that can be an issue. Oh, another thing I should say is Jane and I are gonna spend all day tomorrow in Willard Building with the group who is beta testing Canvas's new quiz tool that they're hoping will be out 2018, yeah. I think at this point. Um, so there's some limitations we found with the current system, this being one of them, and Jane and I are hoping that the new tool will have more flexibility and better so options. On the decimal places, can you convert that to scientific notation? I can think of any number of cases where I'm gonna have to Canvas, no. No. Angel did, Angel understood scientific notation, Canvas does not, and actually, I might, if I have a minute, I can show you some, Bill Brune was specifically okay. teaching students about scientific notation, and we determined that we could not do that well enough in Canvas, so we had, like to gen oversight. we had to generate our own multiple choice yeah. questions okay. where, where we determined yeah. what the answers were. Um, yeah. so, so that that was our workaround. So what about the, the, can the formula only be that simple? Can, do you need to use parentheses instead of brackets? Because it depends on say in Excel or some other programming languages you could make more. Uh, yeah, so you can, formulas. if, have you done Angel formula? So you can get pretty complicated, but it's all order of operations and your use yeah. of brackets and parentheses okay. and stuff. So you can get pretty complicated. I, I, I just, square brackets. You just have to yes, use right. Um, and I think I have some examples in here later on. So anyway, okay. did that, I set up my formula, I said I want, I'm going to go back to two decimal places, and then Canvas, Angel was smart enough that every time a student logged in, it would generate a random equation, random set of numbers for each student. For some reason, Canvas, in the current version of Canvas, it says, how many variations of this question do you want? I set it for 50 and just say, you know, go ahead, generate. Oops. Yeah, that's one possible solution. Just list them all on the list of the formula. I do have a formula. Oh, it's it's okay. up here. So, and generate. Oh, so now it's making 50 different questions. So, if you have a class of 10 students, you could say render 10 variations of this question. I don't really understand why that's there, but me, I go big. I could, go up to, I could go up to 200. Um, the other thing is it's not clear when you first go to make one of these questions. It gives you an allowable margin of error, plus or minus. If you put in just a numeral, then yes, it's gonna be five above, five below. If you throw in the percent sign, then it actually understands and it's actually using a percentage difference. Um, so when you get to order of operations, that's a huge difference. Um, we just tested that this morning to find if out. If you want it that to be works. exact, do you just put zero? Yes. Yep. So then I generated 50 variations, and then right here you can see all the variations of what the answers are. So here's A, here's B, here's what the answer is, plus or minus 5%. And that's basically it. Um, Bill Brune wanted to use MathML in his questions, quiz questions. And so we sat down, did a couple with nicely formatted. So something like this, you have to use MathML or LaTeX to get a nicely formatted question. The problem is Bill wanted to throw in variables into the MathML. So in, when you're writing your LaTeX or your MathML and you put in a square bracket, 
when Canvas renders that equation, it no longer understands that that square bracket is indicating that I want variables. So we were stuck. So after messing with this for a while, I thought, okay, so this is MathML, x equals num1 over num2 divided by num3. <coughs> to get <coughs> variables inserted in there, I created this equation down here, which Canvas, MathML renders this way, Canvas sees this equation and understands that, oh, he wants variables in here. This would be confusing to the student though because they see the same equation twice on the screen, two different formats. So what I did right now, this is purple. What I did was set this to be white text on white and I set the font size to 0.1. So it's tiny when it really presents to the student. And the student has to go ahead and substitute, okay, num1 in this nicely formatted equation above is gonna get substituted and here's where canvas is smart enough where i put the brackets here it's going to substitute the random variable for num1 equals 15 num2 equals 27. Um, so <clears throat> here's a question so what triggers the a bracketed token triggers that it's a that's a math question no 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 why, why do we need the equation because you're you're computing the answer down at the bottom you're telling it what the equation is right why, yeah. why is that equation necessary? The purple one yeah. in there? Because, so what triggers it knowing that I'm doing an equation is A, setting up the formula type question. Right. And B, having- The equal sign? Or no, having a bracketed number means I have a variable in there. Right. But there's no solution. There's there's no problem to solve here. Yeah, but you you tell it the problem to solve down farther. I thought it was I thought it was triggering off of that equation, but you're you're going go down to the formula definition, right? Oh wait a minute. There was the this one. Yeah, so there's the question. So if you take that out. No, it's not accessibility because the equation the the MathML equation is accessible. Right. And so that's what it's reading. And so what you're trying to tell me is if I do that and save, update question. So that's gone. So I'm not sure what number of question this is, but uh, let's go up to the top, tell it, and save. Kind of quiz. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail you. No, I, think, I think you're right. Because Angel doesn't have that formula definition yeah. so, field. It, it actually looks back, doesn't it? Or, no, okay. I haven't been an Angel in a while. Um, I, I think the reason the purple part there is because part of the process of figuring out how to make this work in Canvas. That was before we were thinking where x equals yes. num1, yes. where num2 equals num3. So we had to slip the variables in there somehow. But now that you mention it, yes, I think we can do away without the purple part. So that would be, so if you had an integral and you had bounds, you had the integral from A to B, and then underneath you'd say where B equals variable yes, B. Yes, variable, and then that would take care of it. So, yeah. it did. Right, see in Angel you didn't have to do that. You would put the B and the A in there and and you didn't have to define, you didn't have so to you're right. where. So you're right, so yeah, right. we pulled this out and because in the last step we set what the formula was, then yes. So again, the only brackets we have in the creating the question was bracket num1, which is throwing in the variant of variables now. And if I were smart and I can't preview what the answers are, but yes, David, you're right. So we need to clean up our. I, I like that. I like. I think that's perfectly fine. I think students that won't confuse students. I like that solution. Just having where and yeah. listing your variables mm -hmm. out. Yep. Because they see that often in the scientific literature, anyway. So mm -hmm. yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. You just cleaned up our code then. Thank you. So no purple or hidden white. Correct. So do you use these exams as practice exams for students so you can try it out or is this for the actual exam? Both. Both. So actually, Bill Bruin has it set up that they do practice exams mm -hmm. and then he actually using those same questions pull, pulled into the actual exam. So they're seeing questions that they have seen before, just they're getting random numbers thrown at them this time around. Yeah. So I think that's it. Does anybody have any questions? So you have to be a little creative about when you do the the formula type. I know you were you were asking about can you do complicated stuff? Yeah, so if but, I so you have to do iterative solutions would be problematic if you wanted to go more than two or three iterations. Yeah, and then for those people who might be watching, if Angel allows you to do a multi-step question, so solve part A, that carries through to part B, which carries through to part C. Canvas right now does not allow you to do that. You have to solve one equation at a time, and then if you want that number to carry through to the next one, you have to basically start over again in the second part. Um, it's gonna get to the end of this and keep editing quiz. So does that formula definition, is that a single line or can you have, can you have sub, can you have intermediate answers or, you know what I mean? Like You can have, you can set up a complicated word problem that has multiple solutions. So, you know, you've got two people on two different trains. How long is it gonna take Jeff to get to Pittsburgh? How long is it gonna take Bill to get to Cincinnati? But they're independent of one another. You again, like I said, you can't solve for the second trip based on the first trip. So you could you do like C equals A, give the student A and B and ask for variable D, but A and C equals A plus B, and then D equals C times five. Yeah. You know what I mean? C yeah. is an intermediate variable that's not involved in the problem. Can you set up multiple lines in there? Yeah, so just a single line. Um, here where I put formula in, I could put another one and just add it to it. So again, the odd thing here that if you're not used to the canvas angel difference is they don't want any brackets here. They don't want an equal signs here. They just want whatever the equation is. Oops. But last formula will be used to compute the final answer. So is that what's that four? What's that four? That four is based on the oh, numbers that were given up here. Oh, okay. Then so you can see a sample. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so you could do an you could do an iterative thing. Right. I want to sit down and actually try a couple. Yeah, you could be. Yeah, you could, yeah, you could be creative there. I think. Um, I was going to look to see if Bill has some equations that are a little more complicated than what. So if you look at, that's going to be a simple one too. Actually, multiple choice. Any, any in the calc section, the calculus section? Um, no, those it's are just, a multiple choice. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that familiar with the rest of Bill's course. So. Are you in media? No. You in there right now? Okay. No. He just wanted to be. Anyway, uh, if anybody has any questions afterwards, you can contact any of us, and we'd be happy to come over and sit down with you and camera some of these out. Okay. And likewise, if you learn something new, like yeah. share. Yeah. 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 It's going to come up again. <laughs> well, that's a really good point because the learning designers are kind of the common thread. The faculty may not talk to each other necessarily in the course of their day, no, but the learning designer can I try talk. to avoid faculty. Aww. <laughs> So it is, it's a great way to help us spread knowledge across the college. Have you heard anything about the new quiz tool? Is it gonna, is it just going to be improvements or is it 
they, they break stuff. The reason that it's taking so long to come out is they're starting it over from scratch. Yeah. Wow. To build it. So it's not just tweaks here and there. They've started from the ground up and they, they had a beta um, this past summer because it was supposed to be released this fall. And although I from the test it didn't make it out of Alpha, I think. So right. it, was, it was never made. So when is it no. gonna roll out? Is it gonna roll out in the middle of the semester? Mm -hmm. No, they're thinking last I heard fall of 18 is what they're shooting for. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah, you don't have no okay. hand. <laughs> yeah, so and, and we haven't had our hands on it yet. Today's there are a couple people on campus who got access last week and they're gathering a group of people okay. tomorrow to just look at it. And then they'll give feedback back to Canvas and then they'll plug through a bunch more stuff and make more tweaks and I think it's a really high priority for them to get this because they know what's there right now is not very robust. Yeah. I'm hoping just some of the quiz setting things change, like feedback. Has been a big one yep. for us this week of how you, how students see answers or their answers or the feedback or all that. It's not real. Yeah. Well, see figures with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ryan, notation. do you want to yeah. go next? Sure. Do you want me to? I, I don't yeah. have anything to show. I you can bring... just talk. Then we can stop. The, I'm just gonna. I just, then sit there because well, I can uh, stop sharing. Well, no, you can leave it. Or you want me to show? In a totally different direction. Okay. Totally not technical and take us into the speed grader. Great. And just kind of just give a thumbs up to some of the functionality in the speed grader. I don't know if you have an example. I do. Um, um, because our, our use case that we really like the speed grader interface for is for when students write written papers. And where we. See, uh, oh, yeah, wait, that's can, not it. Sorry. I should have my glasses on. Just check for understanding so we have we have a scenario where we might have say 100 students and a few TAs or grading assistants who are uh, evaluating those written reports and they might want to mark up those documents directly they want to provide feedback they might want to have some exchanges with the students uh, and the speed grader really I think makes that relatively easy and what I like about it is that it keeps it all in the same the same place the same interface mm -hmm. Like so you find, can you can you grade a hundred stuff, hundred papers online? I mean, I'm thinking about the same thing. I've got a hundred projects. Usually, I print them all off. Well, and I, you know, because you I'm want to carrying them with me everywhere I go. I yeah, have, so I have existing uh, papers on my one of my courses. I have some live ones too. I don't remember. We don't want to show students. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, so, so there's nothing the that. <laughs> So David, David asked a good question about, you know, can, does this facilitate grading lots and lots and lots of these? And I don't think so. I mean, still, if you're more comfortable grading on a hard copy, you'll still have to do that. But what it does allow is if you want to mark up the document instead of marking up a PDF or a Word document or something, right? This does have the capability to open up the paper directly in the Canvas interface and put, you know, highlight and put text markups on it. Uh, we don't use that so much for us, but yeah. So um, over here on the on the right side is this is this pane, and this is what we really like. And this is totally simple. This is not math ML <laughs> at all, but it, it's very simple. But it's nice because oftentimes our TAs want to just send back, "Hey, great job," or your citations need some help. Well, they can just put a comment in this little comment box, and the student just sees it. The student can reply to this and it appears right here. Yeah, so you get cool. this you get this Reddit conversation. Really simple, but and it's out of your email. It's no email. Post, so it's a it simple show tool. up on the you can't make comments on on the app. On the app. Okay, we'll get to the app later. Okay. Maybe that maybe you can that's where like I don't that's so. you, I can't I can't I go into here and I leave comments, but how do you know the students read? The app might be a different conversation. Oh, even on here. How oh, on here. Well, yeah. I'm not sure if you can have a trigger. It does initiate an email when your faculty member has graded something. So oh, okay. if they check their email, they would get it. If they check their grade, it shows comments next to it. I mean, so it's hopefully they read. If they check their grade, it would be hard to miss. 
And in the notification I've settings. I've had several cases where I've left comments. Oh, and oh they're that's not. interesting. They haven't seen it. Or you don't know. Well, they'll claim they haven't seen it, but um, I don't know if they're, I just want to make sure if there's an email that's generated or some type of record. Is there a specific item in notification know. settings where you can specify every time something comments. is created? Yes. They get a and notification. Comment. Is that like a like because I won't grade it? I'll just put a comment. A comment. Is there a specific mm, notification no. for that? That might be or might be that it's not. It might. They have, it was a complete incomplete type thing. They didn't complete. Yeah. They tried to sneak an old homework past me. Oh. I submitted. Oh. So, so yeah. So there might be. Oh, you don't think that <laughs> that happens? <laughs> But would you have given that a grade of zero then? If you graded that, well, I, I didn't want to make it a zero just so I didn't have to hassle with the emails coming back that they had turned something in. What they wow. did was they recycled half of them. Oh, I see. So I just said, you know, you put you solved the wrong problems. Resubmit, and they claim that they didn't see it. But if you want to know, they got the email. Give yeah. them the zero. They'll email you back. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the other thing I know is Emily has seen some of my uh, mm -hmm. students. I know Jonathan Matthews likes to give verbal feedback. For him, it's just easier. And you've got options of recording your voice or recording a video as your feedback to the students as well. Yes, that's 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 so, so you've got this little comment thing for just a quick chat. Hopefully, the students will see yeah, it. And I was just curious whether yeah, there's no, a that's way. a great question. Because I know I get like Canvas announcements like. Yes, weekly or something, but I never really look through them because I do so much right. on Canvas that it's pages and pages. Yes, configuring the notification settings in I, Canvas is all the food for thought. That's it is. Yeah. For all sorts of reasons. <laughs> it but is. But what I also like about here is we we often will provide a more lengthy feedback document. Okay. It wouldn't just fit in that chat box. You can attach. You can attach. And what I also like, and the last thing I'll say is that. You know, typically the TA will go back and forth with the student here. But if there's an issue, something comes up, they need to pull me in. I see this whole thing. That's so really it's nice. nice the, the assignment is right there, the comments are right there, the feedback, the back and forth. I can see it, I can chime in. I've had trouble. This is a in the course you set up, it's the other one I have that I set up. <laughs> that I want to make sure that it's not, it's not her, it's me. <laughs> But I don't see the entire chain. Oh, really? Here, I have to go into the grade book to, oh, really? see, the, to see the chain. Huh. Interesting. Mm. Is that something that's changed recently? Might no, just you... be I didn't set up things correctly. I don't know. Like, what part of the chain do you not, do you not see? The Almost ones? the entire chain. I have to go in if there's responses that they send back. So it only shows like the it last two or three. Or no, it doesn't show. It'll show nothing. Really? I have to go into the grade book. Huh. Hit the. Uh, the oh, in the comments window, there. Yeah. And then the comments there show up. Interesting. Is that I, where you're making the comments? Because there's another one you can put comments up top too into this. There's another place to add comments up there. Okay. It's online. Not just on the assignment comments, but they get attached to the document. I think this is a text entry example. So depending on how students provide or submit. Oh, if it's a quiz or something up, else, maybe it's a different interface. Option. Um, or, Let's see no, this was, I was having them, they were supposed to, uh, well, they were supposed to <laughs> give me abstracts, yeah. they were supposed to give me abstracts, and I was supposed to approve really? them for more effort, and so I, know. I would send them back, they sent me an abstract that wasn't good enough, so, uh, okay, yeah, yeah interesting, I, I haven't experienced that, I've been able to see the whole thing, mm -hmm. yeah, but maybe that's another quirk of campus to, I guess it might to figure like, out, to watch out, out for, but, I, yeah. I tried to set it up independent of the professional, Yes. Right there, so. <laughs> Always a risky move. <laughs> there is a little news flash too. As of this week, oh boy. you can now make a comment about an assignment in the Canvas app on the Android device. But not the iPhone. I've noticed that the iPhone app lags a bit behind yeah. the Droid app. And this is as of this week. Okay. So just a few days ago. Okay. So it literally I haven't is, tried this week. Yeah, so. All right. Yes. There we go. You might need to update the app. Again. Yeah. I'm proud of yeah, how you have that set up. So that's all that's all I have. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Sure. David, do you want to come show? Do you want to talk? Do you want to how I don't know if my stuff in there? You can put your module in that works. Okay. I think it's down near the bottom key.
So it's something independent of it's in the building. Yes, it's a canvas. So basically it's an overlay on the correct. What am I talking about again? Pretty. Yes, how do you hear so I got I got Shanghai. I got told that we're doing some pretty things. So, um, so in Canvas, well, let me a little background. In Angel, way long ago, we we had hacked Angel basically so that we could have custom icons and all this other kind of stuff. So when we got here, this is a little bit less hackable. Um, so so a couple of things we did. Um, and, and this is, this is, um, so our, our content is stored in a, on another server. And so there's problems with displaying it directly in this page, although those may, that may change, right? Um, so we'll have to reevaluate when we get there. But what we wanted to do is have some, a nice landing page. So we simply took our custom icons out of Angel and put them here and um, gave a little uh, motivational blurb. And then we discovered that um, you can use, you can copy the buttons that um, Canvas uses. And if you go, there's just, those are styles that are available to you. Um, I wish you could set, I wish you could set a default, yeah. So there, just, you know, button, button primary. Um, so do you have to tell what color it is? There's all different kinds of buttons. If you just, if you look up canvas buttons, there's different colors and. Um, so, under the canvas help, if you look at the style, look for a style guide. There's a right. whole section on buttons, but the code is wrong. Because it has fan style equals class equals. There's something goofy about the styles, the code to give you in the styles that you have to tweak. Oh, to make okay. It. Yeah, maybe I did. Maybe I saw that. And I don't remember doing that tweak, but I did this a long time ago. So, so you're using that read on instead of the next page, or you know, as a more obvious next page button, or? Yeah. So if you click that, I don't know if this will go. So it goes to our, it goes to in, in another page and it's a nice jump out and you don't get that weird, you know, if you try to embed it and then it's got the canvas wrapper. And so this is a, just a, this is just a target, target equals blank and you can go right there. And, and we, um, Hard looking sideways here. Oh, it is hard to see. <laughs> so, um, so we use that in a, in a couple different ways. Um, I think for this one. So now this one, I don't think we used a. Um, we didn't use a we didn't use a button. We just used we just used a link out. Um, can I go? Oh yeah, let's just let's just look through these. So here, show me the solution. Kicks out to a new thing. Um, so uh, and we have little little pictures. Um, have, have I, I think been using this. Yet? No, this yeah. So I forgot to do my disclaimers. So we are teaching. <laughs> we are teaching. Um, we're teaching in Canvas for the first time in the summer. So, but I hope it works because all of our courses look like this. Um, I just wonder if it'll be intuitive for students if they are presented with that new page and a new tab to know to go back to the original one to go on to the next. Yeah, or if that's even going to. I mean, that's the way. It, that's the way it works in Angel. So, and nobody's ever. Nobody's ever yeah. had any problem with that. So because it opens in a new tab and you can see. They should, so, they should recognize it. Yeah. 
it may be it help people understand why why you do that instead of just having it all in the Drupal. Yeah, so so like with some programs like the GIS program, they start the students in Drupal and then for assessments they go to Canvas. Everything is in Drupal. We I think we've just always had it the other way that the that the, the entry point is Canvas because we do well we do our communication in, in Canvas and our assessment. Um, I don't think the GIS do they do the they, do they do? communication they within do this? Start from the, do they start from they start from the LMS but then they pop them out? Okay. I, I always thought it was go now go go back to it's sort of a back and forth, but I mean, I assume always the starting point is the LMS because that's where all students need to go. Okay. All right. So yeah, so we just pop them out and let them do stuff over here, and then um, I, there's been many debates about whether you you know do you do you pop them out and let them navigate in Drupal to find the assignments and and that kind of thing, or do you just link everything, link all the assignments through the LMS anyway, and I suppose they could do both. Um, I've never really had any anybody have any problems with navigation. So this is our solution to the qu the quiz feedback. Um, so the way we used to do, we allow the students to take two quizzes, to take the quiz twice. So in Angel, um, we actually have two separate quizzes: one that gives you the feedback, and one that doesn't give you the feedback, and the the second one is always locked until you take the first one, but with Canvas not allowing, it's always that's been always a little confusing to the students, especially when they don't read the orientation material. They wonder why there's two different quizzes and they're the same. So, so when we went to Canvas, we said, okay, look, so we'll let them just do the quiz twice, and because it can't distinguish, this is their second time showing the feedback. So we don't show them any feedback, and then. We will manually, we will manually publish this when the quiz closes. So the only way we can do it because you can't lock individual items; you can only lock modules. Um, so hopefully, this will will be able to go back to the feedback model when the new quiz set. But but so this is this is just the explanations to the questions, and we'll just unlock this like like we do any other solution. Um, so, let's see, what else, anything else in here? That, that, that's very clever, I'm glad to see you do that because we, we've run into that too with the quiz feedback that it's hard to give general feedback without also revealing all the answers or some, something like that, I can't remember, but yeah. it, just made it, it made it impossible to do. Yep, yep. Well, it was weird because like, it always showed you the general feed, feedback. I mean, if you get it right, you don't need feedback. If you get it wrong, and we give you feedback, then you'll get it right the next time. And then the general feedback showed up regardless. So, essentially, if you want them to see their score, they're going to get whatever feedback you've given, even if you don't show them the correct answers. Right. 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 So, if you have any information in your feedback about the correct answers, you essentially yeah, that's right. That. Yeah. 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 So, show them the, great. the feedback should really be more about like, have you thought about this other aspect of thinking, mm -hmm. perhaps? Or, or this is in section three, part two, paragraph five. Right. Look for how to solve this. Right. I think in the original, in the original angel we used to do in the second quiz, we would put that in red underneath the question. You know, kind of if you miss this the first time, you might want to go back and read this section, mm -hmm. or you, mm -hmm. but we found that that was. That was, I don't know that that helped any, so we took it out. Um, so here's an entry to the problem, that, or to a project. This is, a, this is the first project, so it's quite a bit more verbose than projects two, three, and four. Um, you, you know, just uh, before you, you know, some, some, some questions. Um, we used to have this at the top of every project, and that was a little, little heavy-handed particularly by the end um, so and here's our here's our open project one button um, and then we we talk about we talk about how you're you know it's amazing to me the the number of varieties of project submissions that we get um, you know so uh, 
And then, and then I love, I tell you, I love, I can't wait um, to limit the file types. Oh, gosh. So, so I look forward to that. I look forward to trying out the speed grader. I think I'll still have to print them because it, creating a hundred projects online definitely, definitely. would be really, yeah. now I could see doing, I have another class, a graduate class where, where, you know, I'm going to have at the most like 20 and when they're submitting papers, I can see doing that online and, and marking those up and things. So yeah, we'll see 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think they'll have to, they're going to have to get better at mobile device uh, grading to make that, to make that easier. Like, yeah, I just use the speed grader on the, the app mostly just for complete and incomplete. Oh. Um, when I was teaching my class, if I didn't make them turn in at least attempts at the homework, they never would keep up and then they wait to study the mm. day before the exams. So it's just a complete incomplete. And, and it's easy to do that. I can just look and see that they mm. just made an attempt. So I just say complete, you know, they just sort of get a point. So you use that in lieu of attendance as well. Okay. You don't get to yeah. lectures anymore. But, but you haven't really tried. I haven't tried to. I mean, on small, I was thinking maybe like on an iPad, what, what would grading yeah. a paper on an iPad what would look like? Um, I mean, if they would have the ability to do like I annotate or something on there, you could actually mark it up. Well, I think you directly. can. You can. You, you can. can. you can draw on it. Yeah. They have annotation tools. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do it in here, like I said, or you could just export it out and mark it up like you would any PDF. And then that just can it. And you can just and then bring it back in, attach also okay. as a contract right. back okay. in here. Okay. If you like marking it up separately. Or if you'd like to do an hard copy, then you're, yeah. you're on your own. Yeah, that's a problem I'd like to solve. We have such a kludgy way of but, doing that. Uh, but are the annotate features, are they in the app if you load it onto a tablet? I don't know. I'm not sure SpeedGrader works really well on a tablet. Yeah, I wouldn't think. It doesn't work, doesn't work real great on the phone. Either, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But at least you can comment. But if you're on a tablet, <laughs> I would just go to the website. I wouldn't use the app, right? Well, if I'm out on something, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, this just explains. Uh, so this 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 just explain this is this um this is how we do it. So so in your project, we give you a grid. We type in a grid of numbers, um, and then and then you look at your project and you look at the key and you can say the project says this was two points. And so you got two points for the first one, but maybe you only got one out of the two points for the third one, you know, the third section and things like that. And so, um, this can cause a little bit of grief. I, this is something I'd like to find a way around, but this is what, this is what's worked so far. So, and here again, this is a little bit more perverse verbose because it's the first one. But I mean, everybody gets the hang of it after the first one, so it's just a little bit different. Have but, you used the rubrics in Canvas? So, because I, I, mean, I thought I, about I doing that right for the last. Looks totally like the problem like, is is the rubrics you can't collapse sections, and so so think about so I've got what I've got maybe you know let's say twenty different parts or. 25 different parts, so the rubric is like huge. So um, we may use the rubric tool for the labs. The labs are five questions, and so we may do that. But but I'm going to let my TAs kind of play play. We did play a little bit with the rubrics versus just them. It's it's very easy for them just to say question one missed point, you know. Because they don't, if you got it, I think if you get them right, they don't comment on them, right? But they, um, but I would love it if you could collapse sections of the rubric, like question one, and then open it and then have all the parts. But, you know. So we'll just see, we'll see how it goes. I mean, if anything, we're still doing the same thing we've done, so it's not any worse, but. And I like, I like having the pages to, like I would have to put all this in Angel. I would have to put all this in an email, right? Here's how you do it. And I like having it right there. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. And students refer, refer back to it. And um, yeah, I had a student this semester was, you know, and so here's the, she was like looking at the key and, oh, 
Oh, well, anyway. Um, so she was, she was looking at the key and the key said, you know, two points for this, two points for that. But she thought it was her personal key. I've never had a student do this. So she's like, why didn't I get a hundred? Cause I, cause you gave me, I got, I got all the points for every, I was like, no, 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 no. That, you know, so I don't know. Maybe if you made it, I mean, this is, um, this, project this is, answer key? Uh, this is pretty, I, like I said, I've never had that. I've never, it, it, it amazes me how that the tales of the distribution can misinterpret something. So like, where, where have you come from that this is confusing? So, so anyway, I think that's all the pretty. Great. I don't think there's anything else. Nope. Okay. All right, all right. All right. Um, Todd, do you want to share since you started talking um, about the mobile app? Yeah, I think I sort of just hit on most everything. A little summary. So what's the login stuff like? I noticed, like, when I want, every time I want to go to the app, I have to log in. I don't know. No? So, no. Maybe I've got a setting wrong. Yeah. yeah. You kind of save your login, maybe yeah. there's a button. Maybe. Yeah. Early on. Have to log in and yeah. do yeah. authentication. It makes sense. Yeah. It maybe do that when it when it does update the app. You have to go back in and do oh, that. Maybe. But then it or when you change your password, mm. the university makes you change your password. Right. Right. That's about the only time I've had to go back in after the first time. So, so my question for you would be: Well, first of all, I was thrilled to see that Canvas had an app at all. Yeah. Yeah, just a light years leap from from Angel. Yeah, and the, the iPhone one does seem to lag behind Android, but just in general, since you seem to use it, I don't use it a lot. Do you? I do use, use it, it most, or do you not like it? Is well, it what good? I need is fine. Okay. And if I wanted yeah. to do anything more with grading, if I'm not going to grade projects on it, right? Um, but just for checking attendance or. That, you know, now that you can add comments, maybe I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be able, because if, if I had one, I couldn't go through the speed grader. The thing is, is that the speed grader is a separate app than the Canvas app. Oh, really? Is there even an iPhone version of that? I don't, I don't even know that there is. I don't know, or iPhone, or that one's Android. Yeah. yeah, because it'll ask you if you try to go on the speed grader that you don't have the app. And then you have to oh, interesting. Download that from the Google Have so you tried to go in from a browser? I haven't, no. But do you use it for uh, discussion forums? I don't have any discussion forums. Oh, okay. <laughs> but messaging, do you, uh, does that work pretty well? A little, I just typically use my email. I just allow the, I just have it forwarded to my oh, okay. state account. And I okay. just uh, email off there. Have you, have you found the, um, have you found like notifications and stuff through the app to be pretty decent? You know, I want to know. I really use them now in that way. Like that, I mean, I've, I've been playing a lot with my notes. I mean, you can't, you don't know until you write to the run of class. Yeah. That's what I typically do. That's what I, I just do. eat and then I just run it off my email. Um, okay. Probably not a smart move because now they think you know, that they can, that I should answer them all hours. I just like to know, like, yeah, if somebody make, makes a post or because I know they're so. definitely not in at 7 30 anymore. They're up at yeah. 2 a.m. Yeah. Here is another news flash. I'm just Googling while we're talking. Um, again, recently, there is a speed grader app that has been uh, released for iPad only. So you can access it on your phone. And you, Which would make Android sense. Devices. You'd want it a little bigger. I would, I yeah, I would want it great on the yeah. phone. Yeah. Yeah. No. iPad. iPad I could do with a stylus even. Yeah, even the messaging on the, I, I, the iPhone and discussion forums feels clunkier than it, yeah. I've seen on the yeah, But I can yeah. tell you, those students, I have students that sit in class with their phone. I assume that they're looking at the lecture slides because I'll ask them questions. Okay. And, they have and, they're, the and, they're and they have the phone. Yeah. I, I still have a hard time getting around that students don't write things down. I have them sit there and stare at me for 15 minutes. And not write. And not write a thing down. Just there. All right, thank you very much. Our last presenter is Beth Bailey, who's uh, sharing her screen remotely. And can is your mic on? Beth? I just put it back on. Can you guys hear me? 
is on. Yes. Okay, then you're ready to go, Beth, unless we're not hearing you. Maybe my speaker went off. No? Can you hear me okay? Going here. Is she? Okay. Oh. Let me test my speaker here, Beth, because we're not seeing you. Okay. Hold on. All right. It's not seeing my speaker. Now. Okay. And go right in there. I thought I saw on her picture it was muted. She was muted. Did was she muted? No, I, I unmuted. She's talking. Mean, oh, yeah. Okay, she's still talking. Get, get, out of the, get out of Zoom and go to the, the computer, um, the task bar at the bottom of it. Uh, you minimize this. Exit. 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 I don't know. It's, it's, it's not got any volume. Oh, that looks good. Sometimes with these, you have to put them on mute. And then... Yeah, that's what oh, I, I was just going to say. And with Zoom, I, we've always had such good good experience, but sometimes hit the, speaker. the person has to get out yeah, and get back in. One? No, the bottom one. Oops, sorry. The little speaker. This one. Yeah, mute it and try it. Okay. No, that's not. That's not bad. My other thought. Because this is, it, it sounds stupid, but Let me make that sure. might try getting out and getting back in again. That is sometimes sure. done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the seeing. Seem to be on our end. It is on our end. I'm not getting it. Here out of this computer. All right. You see stuff on the side of it. Yeah. Is there anything? Yeah, over here to plug into. No. Nope. Oh, that makes sense. That's yeah. Just plug into the projector. Is there an off-on thing on that thing? Yeah. That's on. I did. That's Beth rejoining. You can tell her the problem seems to be on our end. You know what? I'll, I'll have. She's not back in yet, though. Okay. Or she's not. I don't know what that thing was, but. Oh. That was me. Oh. So she, she, could, she could call one of our phones and we could. That's true. I've done that before. Can you guys hear me? I can't hear her. No. Testing, testing. Go ahead, Beth, and share your screen. Okay. Can you hear me? Louder, if you can. Uh huh. 
All right, one second. Now I can't find my screen. <laughs> Hold on one second. That's strange. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Hello, hello. Oh, that's why, because I have the wrong browser open. Hold on one second. Let me grab the correct one. Too many windows open. <laughs> I had it set. Yes, found it. Okay, one second. Don't fall. We're just going to plug For some in. reason, it's. Uh, let me try that one. Okay. Now we see it. Can you guys hear that echo or no? And can you hear me okay? I no longer can hear you. I can't hear them either. Oh, now I can hear you again. All right, that should be good, Beth. Can you hear and see us? I can. I can. Okay. All right. I will do the short and sweet version of this. And actually, I'd like to break this out into two, um, into another session, because there's kind of a, there's many different things that you can do with VoiceThread. That's what I'm going to be covering very briefly today um, within Canvas. But today, I'm just going to show you how to add it and integrate it into your Canvas space. Another time, um, the next time we do one of these or in a future session, I'd love to show you guys more about the grading um, of VoiceThread conversations within Canvas. So um, first off, we used this in a course this past spring with 17 students in Geography 432. Brandy Robinson is the instructor. The course is Energy Policy. And there were many discussions that um, were very, uh, had the potential for quite lively conversations um, in this particular time period. So we said, hey, let's try something new. Um, so we decided to go for VoiceThread. So since this is a Canvas, you know, hidden gem sort of thing, I'm just going to hop right in. First of all, I wanted to let you all know that I added a VoiceThread information um, uh, page with an instructor's guide and a student guide. And I have to say both of these links were super helpful in getting us started. Also helpful to know is um, the support at VoiceThread. Whenever I had a question, they were very prompt in getting back to me with um, the answers. So, now, let's... does that kind of speak VoiceThread people or at the company? Uh, not university. So, right with the company. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, am I going to get like a bill for this? <laughs> Or something. I don't know. So Annie, you might get a bill. I don't know. That's like I'm always paranoid with the canvas chat. I'm like, oh, I use them a lot. Anyway. <laughs> so I apologize if I'm too expensive for the support. I don't know. You're worth it. <laughs> so anyway, so what I'm gonna show you right now is adding voice thread to your course and setting up a voice thread link. And what I'm gonna do is just hop into modules here. And um, I'm gonna show you an example for a non-graded activity for a voice thread. So basically you go to your modules and um, I'm gonna pop it down to where we are today for the presentation. And we're gonna do add content. What we're gonna do here is add external tool. And as you'll see, you can select various tools and you may have used different ones, but we're gonna choose VoiceThread. And this is important. You see this URL and it's got the LTI one. And that becomes important because that is literally your link for your course in within Canvas for VoiceThread. So you can use that throughout um, that course. 
All right, page name. I'm just going to do voice thread. So it generates a unique URL for each. No, well, so this is, okay. No, what it does is that allows you to basically come to a home page for your um, course within Canvas. And I'll show you in just one second what I'm talking about there. So now we're going to add that item and save. So now you can see, oh, well, I'll publish it. I guess you can see it too. Um, so now I'm going to click on the link. And what you should see next is we can choose here. So right now we're in Canvas, but as you can see, you know, the voice thread is part of, it's just right within, it's integrated. Um, you can choose course view, home, which is the voice thread home, or you can choose an individual voice thread, which you would have a link for that you prepared prior. I'm gonna go to course view. In this case, I just created a, a sample earlier. Oh, but it's not found. <laughs> oh, probably because I didn't publish it. Okay, so what you can do here is typically here, you would be able to see um, VoiceThreads for that particular course if you were in VoiceThread and you um, identified it with a certain course. Let's see if I can get to my home. Mm. Oh, didn't want to do that. Sorry about that. I was thinking it would. All right, one second here. Yeah, still not finding one. Okay, so like I said, typically you you can either create your voice thread right in this environment, or you can do it via voice thread and then find it later. So we can just create one right here, or I can select from my voice threads as it shows me. And here it is. So this is my voice thread sample. So if you had a course that had many different voice thread voice thread discussions, you could select which one you wanted. So you select, and I want others to go because my window seems to be smaller. Oh, now I'm sharing this voice thread within Canvas. Usually it's pretty but right at this moment, it's not. Um, so basically, that's how you would apply um, a voice thread right within your Canvas environment. Um, there's different things that you can do. You can add it as a graded activity, which is something that I would like to handle or cover. I don't know why this is being so slow. Um, anyway, so but I'll, I'll handle that in a different session. Um, I wanted to show you, I wanted to show this to you, but it's not cooperating. Perhaps if I try it again. It's definitely there because when I went and I go into the course, it shows yeah. up. So go to modules and click on it again. Okay. All right. Let's try that. Because you'll see your voice thread sample. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> or at least I see it. There it is. Okay, excellent. So if you, so basically this is what you would do and the students would go in to the actual sample and then they can respond to it as you wish. And it's, and there's many different things you can um, have the students do. You could have that. Hi everybody, this is Beth oh, Bailey. There we go. I am. Okay. So now from here with VoiceThread, you can allow for comments. So right now I'm going to do a, a typed comment. Or you could do, and then basically what shows up is your, um, you know, your profile picture. And, and now I can also respond to this comment. So you can do threaded discussions. Could be interesting. This is my uh, threaded discussion comment. I should go in and comment. <clears throat> Thank you. So anyway, so as you can see, you can just go on and on, and the students, you can set up a formal discussion um, or informal. 
and have the students read and respond to your own um, discussion as well as other other discussions. So it worked out well in this course. We have some, you know, food for thought for the future. Um, things you should think about are think about what you really want to get out of the discussion, and is this the right medium? So. Um, Brandy, in this case, found it to be less formal than a written discussion. So just think about things like that as you go on um, to decide to use it or not. Did you get uh, any feedback from students, Beth? Like, I wonder, because you can't skim through it like you could a written one. Do they care or? Right. So we don't have the feedback yet. Um, so we will soon, though, since she's wrapping up the course. So I'm happy to share that. Um, one thing that we learned also is it's, I mean, I will say this, the students were very chatty and, um, in fact, Brandy had to go in and say, okay, uh, you know, set a time limit per, per question, um, because the students, they really, I think they did actually, perhaps they did enjoy it because they went on and on and, and responded to each other and, um, and just kept talking. So had had very good and lively conversations, as was the hope. You think the, the modern student prefers to do this type of discussion instead of written discussion? It's an interesting question. Um, because they did this, these topics that we were covering um, this spring were Either way, I think would have produced, you know, um, intense and lively conversations. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is like right now, as I'm doing here from a distance in terms of just kind of talking and um, students, yeah, they, that's a good question to know if, if they would prefer that. Um, from a grading perspective, it's a little bit challenging. There is a way to connect it to the grade book, which I'll show you at another time. Um, which that would have made the grading for this much easier this time around. Um, so, great. Thank you, Beth, for sharing. And we've kept you a little bit longer, but um, we'll stick around for questions or if you have any ideas or we'll be rejoining uh, and continuing on with the Food for Thought sessions in the early fall. I think we're gonna open it up with maybe some academic integrity um, kind of options. Uh, people are, I'm sure, are ready to move on from Canvas, although we might interject some cool things if you have any interest in things in the future. If you have ideas for topics, we are more than ears, or our ears are very open. <laughs> um, but thanks for coming. Enjoy more cupcakes, um, and we'll see you in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the cupcakes. And thanks for sharing, everybody. That makes it much more fun. Of course. Yeah. Incidentally, you can just support, chat, and whatever is very good. Oh, good. Very responsive. Yeah, yeah I love the chat. Canvas, canvas people.